two Sundays ago, we're at the house, and I'm sitting there saying, Mario's asking questions, we're going back and forth. It's like, so, you know, how do you do leadership development? How do you improve yourself? How do you increase the value in the marketplace? What do we do with some of our guys? What do you do to get your people to be better and yourself to get better? And we wrote out and we came out with this paradigm shift quadrant. Let me share this with you. There's four areas that you and I can improve ourselves to increase our market value. Two of them you do doesn't explode your market value. Two above that you do explodes your market value, you and the people that work with you. Let me share this with you. Bottom left is hard skills. Does anybody here have a hard skill that pays very well? Raise your hand if you have a good hard skill. Matter of fact, on three, scream out the hard skill that you're very good at. One, two, three. That's a hard skill, okay? So first one is hard skills. You learn how to get a hard skills. If you learn hard skills, you pretty much have a nice salary for yourself, but it's not enough. So, so what's the next one, Pat? I said character. What's character? Character doesn't mean stealing, cheating, any of that stuff. Character to me is somebody that shows up, somebody that's doing the work, somebody if they say they're going to do something, they do it, somebody that follows up, somebody that doesn't cancel appointments. If we got a 5 o'clock appointment, all of a sudden somebody invites you to a Laker game, you don't cancel the appointment and go to a Laker game and reschedule it. There's a lot of salespeople that will always reschedule appointments the moment something else comes up. I don't like that kind of stuff. You got a 4 o'clock appointment, keep your 4 o'clock appointment. Unless if a massive crisis happens, and less than 1% of your appointments you should reschedule or cancel. Let me say that one more time. Less than 1% of your appointments you, you should ever reschedule and cancel. This guy keeps all of his appointments. He shows up on time, clients are very happy. If you do those two things, is that enough? Are those two things alone to increase your market value today? The answer is no. Because those two just make you a good citizen. And every company, every community, every society needs good citizens, but it's not enough. There's two of them that we got to go through here. Soft skills today is very, very valuable. A lot of people are not that good at soft skills. A lot of people know how to do real estate. Maybe they know how to sell, but they're not that good with people. They know how to do insurance, annuities, 401ks, but they're not that good with people. Soft skill is knowing how to talk to a person that's a customer that's married. They're in their 60s. You talk to somebody that's widowed, divorced, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, degree, no degree, makes six figures, is low income, middle income, very wealthy, very well off, affluent. Soft skills allows that person to be able to work with everyone. You increase your market value if you got good soft skills. And then the last one is a paradigm shift. Almost everybody in this room if you ever suddenly recreated yourself and you were a new person that your family, friends had never seen before, you had a paradigm shift. You had a paradigm shift. It could have been with your family. It could have been with your friends. It could have been with something. But let me explain what a paradigm shift is. Paradigm shift is, some of you guys are here. Is this day one or is this day two of the event? Is this day two? Day one of the event? Okay. Who today... Out of all the speakers, not myself, the people prime me, who today said something to you that got you really thinking all day today? How many guys saw something, somebody said that you've been thinking about it all day today? Okay, so what was it? Somebody tell me what it was. What was the one thing somebody told you that got you thinking all day today? Mental toughness, what else is it? Execute, what else? Operations and systems, what else? Say that again. Long term, what else? Total recreation. Total recreation. Okay. Let, let me give you some paradigm shifts for me. I'm in the Army. I'm about to re-enlist for six years. It's June of 1999. Everything I asked for my sergeant, they brought for me. My colonel, they gave to me. I'm going to Vicenza, Italy. I'm going to go be a special forces, 18 Delta. They gave me everything I want. I spoke four languages, five languages. German was good, but it wasn't good enough to be counted as a fifth. I was going to go to DLI. I was going to go to Vicenza. I was going to get everything. I'm in bed. At 11.45, I get a call from a guy I had barbecue with last night. Guy's name is Kogan. He calls me, says, hey, Pat, how's everything? I said, great. I'm about to re-enlist for six more years. They got me everything I wanted. He says, what do you mean? I said, I'm about to stay in the Army for six more years. He says, you can't do that. I said, what do you mean I can't do that? I'm doing that. I'm doing it tomorrow. You can't do that. I said, I'm, I'm doing it tomorrow. I like, can't do anything about it. I already told my dad I'm re-enlisting tomorrow. It's my ceremony. I'm getting an Army accommodation medal, and I'm gone. 
Pat, you can't do it. Give me one hour to convince you not to do it. I'm like, you're not going to do it. One hour on the phone. The things he told me, he shook me. I couldn't believe what he was telling me. By the time we were done, I couldn't sleep all night. I woke up. I couldn't even sleep. I got up in the morning. I went to Lieutenant Colonel Peacock's. I said, Colonel Peacock, I got to tell you something. He says, what's that? I said, I can't re-enlist. He says, what do you mean? He said, I got to go into civilian. I got to go be a civilian. I think I can make it as a civilian. But David, you're going to be an incredible soldier for us. I can't re-enlist. I have to get out. I got a phone call. I'm so sorry because you changed my life. I got to get out. I can't re-enlist. They pull my Army accommodation medal. I get out of the Army. That phone call was a paradigm shift because a guy made a phone call and believed in me at my low, like I'm like, you, me, I'm a regular army guy, 1.8 GPA. Who was in the military here before? Make, make some noise if you were in the military before. Okay, let's make some noise for these guys. By the way, what was your, what was your ASVAB score? Scream out your ASVAB score on three. One, two, three. I, I got a 31. The only job I could be is infantry or a Hummer mechanic. Guess what I chose? Hummer mechanic. I'm a regular guy. I'm supposed to do 20 years in the military. That phone call shook me, couldn't sleep. I had a paradigm shift. I got out. My life changed. One day I'm at a, a Christmas party with my family, my dad and I, a Syrian Christmas party. I'm 25, 26 years old. We're talking to everybody. We're poor. We're not doing well. And one of the guys on my dad changed his life. The guy makes a comment to my dad, and my dad offends my dad. I listen to him. I'm like... Dad, what did he just say to you? He said this. I said, he can't talk to you like that. I said, Patrick, these are my friends. You can't say anything. I said, no, we're leaving. We're not staying here right now. We got to get out of here. I said, no, no, we're not leaving. It's a Christmas party. They invited us. I said, Dad, you don't talk to my dad like this. I said, listen, I love you. You're family. I love you a lot. But you don't talk to my dad. It's just a joke. It's not a joke I like. It's not a joke I like. Dad, we're leaving. I'm not leaving with you. I'm your, I'm your ride. What are you talking Let's go. We gotta get well, I'm not leaving with you. What's the matter? I said, we're leaving, Dad. We're leaving. We get in the car. Ford Focus is what I'm driving. I'm 6'5". I don't fit on a Ford Focus. I'm driving a Ford Focus. <laughs> Do you know a 30-minute drive from Glendale to Granada Hills? We're fighting the entire time. We're fighting. I'm like, I allowed another man to disrespect my dad in front of me, and I'm not. Guys, that small little 75-second interaction is why I told my entire family the world's going to know my dad's last name. I said, Dad, they're going to have to kill this guy. They're going to know your last name. They're going to know your last name. How much you did for all of these freaking people in your family, they're going to know your last name. They're going to have to kill me. They're going to know your last name. What are you saying? We're regular people. What is the matter with you? Why are you saying stuff? I, that, that I, I understand. But they're going to know who you are and how many people's lives you changed. Your son's going to show the world what you're all about. You'll see. I call my family, my sister and my brother-in-law come and I talk. Guys, I don't, I don't talk like this. I had a paradigm shift. I went to sales meetings. This is, is this Long Beach Convention Center? 20 years ago, I went to a Tony Robbins seminar here. I was 21 years old. These are paradigm shift type of moments, but you have to receive it. When this thing ends at 7.30 tonight, I don't know what plans everybody got. I'll tell you what I'd be doing if I was at a place like this, especially with the shit show of a market we got going on right now. I'm not going to the bar drinking. I'm going to go get cards, network, do all that stuff. Boom, straight away from everybody. Business planning, pen, paper, let's go for hours. I'm going to have a paradigm shift type of a moment at this event. I'm going to change my life. What hard skills do I need? What character do I need to improve as a human being? What soft skills do I need? What do I need to do? I'm going to do something special in my life. That's the decision you got to be making. FYI, less than 5% of you will do what I just said. Less than 5% of you will do what I just said. Most of you are looking forward to partying tonight. I went to an insurance conference. One of the main executives says, Pat, why don't you ever drink with everybody? I said, drink for What? He says, but you always have a drink, but you start with the same drink, and at the end of the night, it's the same drink with the same amount left. I said, first, I want to make everybody feel comfortable. I have a drink, but I'm not drinking. Why don't you drink? Because if I drink, I'm loose. I'm no longer learning. I'm talking. If I stay still, they're talking. I'm learning. Why would I drink? He says, I never thought about it that way before. You guys got to make a decision. These numbers I'm telling you, these people are not any more special than you. They made a flipping decision a long time ago. They made a very major decision a long time ago. And today your family, your peers, people around you are relying on you. I went to this protesting right before. I'm going 120 miles an hour on the freeway with people in the car. 
I went around the Iranian community. I don't like what's going on anymore. It bothers me. I was born in Iran. I'm made in America. I'm half Armenian, half Assyrian, and I love America, but I love Iran. I got four kids. I want to one day take them there and show them these places. These things matter to me. You have to think about your heritage. You have to think about the sacrifices your mom, your dad made to bring you to America. You, you owe it to them on what they did for you. That has to get you to be thinking about your dreams in a complete different way. This ain't about a Lambo and a Ferrari and a Rolls Royce and a $25 million house. This ain't about that. This is about today, the world is looking for leaders and what are you going to do about it? That's what today's all about. So now, these two things. Bottom one, reliable citizen. I'm willing to bet 100% of you are reliable citizens. You're good for marketplace. You pay your bills, you pay your taxes, you take care of your family. I'm willing to bet 99% of you guys are good citizens or else you wouldn't be at an event like this. The one above is impactful citizen. It is time for us to make a decision to become an impactful citizen, not just a reliable citizen. This is the part about a paradigm shift. I told you right up front I was going to be straight up with you. You can have plenty of motivational speakers. It's not my style. I'm going to give it to you raw. You like it, great. You don't like it, it's not my problem. You got to do something with this. That's how I like to be spoken to. I want somebody to tell me exactly what the hell is going on and what do I need to know and what do I need to do about it. That's all I want to hear from you. That's the message that I took. So to wrap it up here for you guys on this message side, you have to understand this part, guys. I want to finish with this. Never in my life have I been more optimistic about the future and shit's never been crazier than it is today. It's so weird. It has never been crazier than it is today and I've, I've never been more optimistic than I am today. The country we're living in, living in has always been known for developing leaders. If you live in America, you come to America, if you attend an event like Driven, hosted by Albert and Sil, who they've been doing this year after year after year after year after year for six years, good times, bad times, doesn't matter, they're gonna put their events together, which by the way, make some noise for Preciados for doing a great job hosting these events. This entire event was put together. This entire event, in a greedy way, you have to think about it this way. This entire event, when I would come to events, I would say this. This entire event's been put together for one person. I don't care if there's 10,000 people in the room, 5,000 people in the room, 1,000 people or 100 people in the room. This entire event was put together for one person, and that's me. Which means it's who? It's you. You got to receive the message. You got to make that paradigm shift. And then 6, 12, 24, 36 months, 10 years, 13 years, 26 years later, we're going to be reading about your story. I'm going to sit there and say, look at these. This guy talked about an event he was at 2022 when the market was going crazy. He attended this event called Driven. Look at what this guy did with his life. Good for freaking him. Good for freaking her. Good for freaking that husband and wife that make, made a decision to do something big for themselves. And then you're going to be proud of yourself. <laughs>